Uh, walk us through your early days at the Kakuma refugee camp and how it transformed your life. Thank you so much. I arrived at Kakuma refugee camp at age 11 after fleeing an armed attack on my village in Ethiopia, uh, where my father set all actually after fleeing the first Sudan civil war um, and moved to Ethiopia. Arriving in Kakuma refugee camp, I was devastated. I was frustrated by all the brutal images of violence I saw while fleeing my country. Uh, but as, as a kid, I wanted to be a journalist. So when I was able to go to school in Kakuma refugee camp, I put one thing in my mind, and that was to learn good English, uh, go to the UK and work for BBC. Uh, and through that process, I was able to connect with other kids who have also come from different uh, conflict-affected countries across Africa. They live in Kakuma refugee camp, which is a big refugee camp with over 250,000 refugees. And it was, you know, when I was in high school that I started getting involved in community work. I set up different initiatives to help young people in the refugee camp be able to let go of their trauma initiative, like the refugee piece of us that train young people on a skill that help them become leaders in their community, on a skill that help, that help them have hope again. Initiative like She Leads Kakuma that empower young women and girls in the refugee camp to become leaders in their communities mm -hmm. and being involved in different ways to advocate for refugees globally. Dang, tell us where you go to school now and uh, how you got uh, to be on the short list of about 50 students uh, for a very highly coveted price of 100,000 US dollars. Thank you so much. So I, in 2021, I was able to get a full scholarship to go to Canada. So I got a full scholarship to to Huron University College in London, Ontario, Canada, where I'm now uh, pursuing a bachelor degree in global studies and journalism. And uh, the Global Student Prize, which is run by Shake.org every single year, uh, select um, one student from across the world that is doing amazing work to support other young people in their communities and to become a leader. And this year I managed to be on the top 50 uh, finalist for the Global Student Prize. And the list was actually brought down to top 10 last week. So I'm now on the top 10 and hoping forward for the best. Well, I'm hoping you're going to get it. But let's talk about your two foundations very quickly. Tell us about them and what impact they have on the youth. Thank you so much. So the first initiative I said about the Refugee Peace Ambassadors, I think first thing that I was really passionate about was trying to create a space for young people to come together and be able to learn a skill that helped them, you know, have hope again and be able to dream big again. So with the Refugee Peace Ambassadors, we run workshop on leadership, on peace building. We, are, we have mentorship program that we run across the camp. We have social entrepreneurship projects. Uh, we have um, leadership programming. And so far, we've been able to support over 20,000 young people in Kakuma Refugee Camp that are participated through different programs that we run in the Refugee camp. She leads Kakuma Focus a lot on supporting young women and girls in the camp. Uh, we've been able to put 500 young women and girls through a mentorship program where we connect them with mentors across the world uh, that support them in becoming leaders in their community and thinking about how they can also become change makers and advocate for issues affecting them. You know, what surprises me is that you are at the refugee camp at the age of 11. You're only 24 and you've reached this far. There's hope for those at the refugee camps anywhere in the world. Uh, tell me a little more about your recent trip to the Kakuma refugee camp. How are you received and what are you doing there? Did you empower those kids over there? It was very incredible. You know, sometimes when I'm house, where is home for you, always tell people Kakuma refugee camp because it is where I feel at home, honestly. Uh, and uh, being back with the refugee camp was very special. And I think for the many young people there in the refugee camp that are able to show me and welcome me, it's bring a bit of hope to them. They asked, they told themselves that if Niall can make it, if Niall is able to go to college and come back and try to empower us, I can also do it. So when I went back to the refugee camp, I was able to run a one week mentorship program with Chile Kakuma, where we bring together 100 young women and girls in the refugee camp. I went to different school with the UN, talking to kids in those schools, telling them about my story, telling them about the work I do, sharing a skill that I've learned uh, through my journey to also help them, you know, be on the same journey that I've been on, to also help them become be on the same uh, path that I've taken. Uh, so it's been a great trip. You know, I was welcomed warmly by people in the refugee camp. It's a place that is very, very special to me. And I'm actually going back there again soon before I go back to school.